He again is with the Pauley Clinic, Dr. Sean Keem, orthopedic spine surgeon, and Shannon O'Kelly talking about minimally invasive spinal surgery. Dr. Keem, welcome back. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. And yourself? Doing great. Thank you. Last time you came on, we talked about, I believe it was Tony Romo, and he had this back problem, and you kind of talked about what happened with him and his injury and kind of outcomes and stuff like that. But, you know, stuff like that. How do you like that? I wanted you to come back because I want to talk to you about your specialty, which is spine surgery, but more importantly, mentally invasive spine surgery. We hear about mentally invasive surgery a lot in the world of medicine, particularly in um, shoulders and knees and those type of uh, areas. But what about the spine? So tell us about minimally invasive surgery of the spine and your take on it. Sure. Well, first, thank you for having me back and uh, great to be here. So basically, minimally invasive spine surgery is doing a spine surgery, utilizing special technique, creating minimum tissue disruption in the surrounding tissue. That's what it is all about. And it may employ endoscopy, tubing system, special retractors, and whatever we do, we create minimally invasive, we take the minimally invasive route to minimize soft tissue trauma around the spine. Okay, so so if you go back 20, 25 years or even 15 years, uh, uh, maybe 10 years even, if you had back surgery, a lot of times you'd end up, let's say, a three to four inch incision in your back, uh, fairly fairly long incision when you're considering the spine. And what you're talking about, uh, that incision, there'd be a lot of moving tissue around muscles, tendons, et cetera. And now you're talking about a much smaller incision minimally invasive, less trauma to that tissue. Is that is that correct? That is correct. Actually, uh, it is not time manners. And uh, even in the same, even in this current era, 95% of the spine surgery is being done utilizing traditional spine surgical oh, technique. Oh, I did not know that. By doing minimally invasive spine surgery, you have a much better chance to create a better outcome for the betterment of the patient. And is your access, I mean, because when you hear about the spine, if we talk about the cervical or the neck or the lumbar spine or the low back, a lot of times you talk about a posterior approach or there might be an anterior approach. I mean, is there any uh, special approach when you talk minimally invasive surgery? Is there a best or something that you like to do you prefer? There are many ways of doing a minimally invasive spine surgery. Long as the surgical technique creates a minimum tissue disruption to the surrounding tissue, and now as long as it is done through a small incision, and it is considered as a minimally invasive spine surgery, that could be done posterior from the back, it could be done anterior from the front, or it could be done side lateral, or it could be done oblique lateral. And uh, what I've been doing lately for the lumbar spine is oblique lateral incision and minimally invasive spine surgery. So on the oblique, so when you tell our listeners, when you say oblique lateral, you're going through almost the area, like if, if you remember back as a kid where you had a side ache maybe, where you used to get a side ache, you're going through that area, kind of right, right That's there? That's exactly right. The area that you're just grabbing right now with your hand. Yeah, yeah, yes. on radio here. So, right so, here, yeah. so <laughs> midline between your uh, umbilicus, belly uh-huh. button, and the side uh-huh. in between. That's the direction that I usually approach lumbar spine nowadays. That's called oblique lateral lumbar fusion surgery or decompression. Fascinating stuff. I, I, I love talking to folks like yourself because I'm just trying to picture that and the technique and I'm trying to understand and let our listeners more importantly understand because they're on the radio, obviously, not looking at us touch our sides. But you're going through the side there and you're doing surgery in the back and through a tube Tell us about the, the instruments because you're doing it through a scope, if I'm, if I'm understanding this, watching on a TV and doing the surgery through a tube going into the spine. That's correct. So usually it is done incision between four to six centimeters long, depending on the patient's body size. And uh, I go in the area called retroperitoneum from the front, and I place special retractor in there. And that will take me to front part of the spine. And the front part of the spine is where all those load bearings are happening. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, I clean up whatever I need to clean up and place whatever I need to place to decompress the spinal canal, to correct the spinal alignment, and to stabilize the spine. Back with Dr. Sean Keem after this time out on Como. Dr. Keem, again, thank you for coming down and thank you for sharing minimally invasive surgical techniques for the spine. You were just describing the technique. And I just want to review this because, again, I think this stuff is really fascinating. And I know our listeners on the radio are trying to get a visual on this. Is you are basically inserting a tube and you're inserting a scope through that tube going into the spine and doing all the work you need to do on the spine through that little incision that you described as three to five 
uh, millimeters or centimeters? Well, actually, uh, four to six centimeters. Oh, yeah, four to six. So say It's okay. a little bigger than three to five millimeters. Well, yeah, 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 good. Good, I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to get the metric system down, sure, right? Sure. But here's the deal. As a physical therapist, I can tell you, I think the majority of the, the, the things that we see following back surgery is really the recovery time, not so much from the surgery, but back in the day, it's moving the muscles, it's it's cutting muscles and moving tissue, and it's that trauma that the patient experienced accessing the surgery site. So you're telling me you're doing through a scope, which I'm thinking as a therapist, the outcome must be really incredible for these people. Absolutely, and uh, I've been enjoying a great outcome. And again, now when you touch the area that you were just grabbing not mm-hmm. long ago, that's the one area that you don't have a lot of muscles. Right. And uh, that's the area that muscles are rather pliable. I can, I can easily kind of split open instead of like, cutting it off. Right. And then I can put my retractor in there. So there's no muscle cutting. Because there's no muscle cutting, there's no bleeding really. Recovery is phenomenal. Often a lot of my patients, if it is just a single area problem, they go home the next day. And even for a scoliosis correction, people usually go home within the matter of three to four days. And the quality of the recovery is much better. It doesn't hurt that much. Right, yeah. So you don't have to take a lot of narcotic pain medication. And I'm sorry that you are a physical therapist. Often, it kind of obviates the necessity having to have a prolonged physical therapy. Well, we're good, so. and we're good with that. <laughs> we're good with that. We, we really like to see that. This is great stuff from a physical therapy standpoint. When we can get right into the movement and function and not have to spend so, uh, or the majority of our, remember, a lot of our patients are only going to get 12 visits in a calendar year sometime. So if we can get into the functional exercise and education and home program and make that patient independent quicker, that's better for you and me, and more importantly, it's better for the patient, isn't it? That's a great synergy between you and me. Right. <laughs> That's what it's all about. And the outcome for the patient is incredible. I mean, this minimally invasive surgical, uh, you're, you're, you're getting them moving faster. They're recovering. They're getting back to work, getting back to activity. Back surgery sometimes can take, take a little bit of time. Tell me about it. Not only that. <laughs> and you do, uh, you know, people have this saying about once you have somebody touch your back, you're going to have to do surgery over and over again. So because we are minimizing the surrounding tissue, Tissue trauma, having to bring the patient back and to the more surgery, it's very rare. Yeah, right. So we don't have to do a lot of revision surgery. And uh, I mean, I like to do the surgery, but I like to offer my service to new patients rather than bring the same old patients that I did surgery a year ago and two years ago and I keep having to fix it. So I don't do that anymore. I rarely do it. Well, once again, thank you so much for your time. Great information. I'm sure our listeners are, 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 are really interested in minimally invasive spine surgery. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Have a great afternoon. Pretty amazing stuff, Shannon. The minimally invasive spinal surgery. I guess maybe it was the knee that became kind of the first to get the arthroscopic surgeries where you could just go in using that scope. You could look at the camera and clean up what had to be done. And now, similar stuff with the spine. Now the spine, but knee, shoulder, and even the hip today, you can scope the hip, which you go back 25 years. I mean, you just lived with that impingement of the hip, you know? So advances, advances, advances. Pretty amazing stuff. You can get more information on this at polyclinic.com.